The initial point I'd like to emphasize is that worldwide economic downturns are infrequent. Contractions in individual nations or economic unions like the EU do occur frequently. However, a global economic downturn is distinct. Generally, even when a sizable collective is experiencing an economic downturn, someone else is progressing. In the past, China referred to the U.S. as the primary force. If Germany encountered an economic downturn, somehow the U.S. could push forward. Despite experiencing three downturns between 1974 and 1982, yet a worldwide economic downturn is uncommon. We witnessed one around the period of the 2008 financial crisis. Although Australia managed to sustain itself, it's acceptable particularly during the 2020 pandemic lockdowns. Nevertheless, these instances are unusual. Usually, one faction faces a bit of adversity, while another faction perseveres, sometimes even assisting the struggling country or faction to overcome difficulties. However, when global gross domestic product, GDP, diminishes, that's uncommon. That's precisely where we're headed. To comprehend this, Let's delve into some of the largest economic blocks, starting with the United States. The United States encountered a minor downturn in the initial half of 2022. If you blinked, you might have missed it. The GDP for the first quarter showed a decline, albeit marginal, of approximately 1.6%. Second quarter GDP also exhibited a reduction, around 9 tenths of 1. Therefore, over the initial half, we experienced a decline in GDP. The general rule of defining a downturn is two consecutive quarters of decreasing GDP, and we met that criterion. The figures confirm it. However, it was mild, and GDP rebounded in the third and fourth quarters. Yet, what I'm predicting is a much more severe downturn, considerably more challenging, with a notable decrease in economic output starting approximately now. This will be accompanied by rising unemployment, decelerating industrial output, a decline in retail sales, and importantly, a substantial drop in inflation rates. This constitutes one of the perplexing aspects concerning the U.S. stock market. While it appears straightforward to me, the market operates on its dynamics. They argue that if the Federal Reserve increases rates as I've described, leading to an economic downturn, the Fed will need to reduce rates. That's what's termed as the pivot. The Fed's pivot and lower rates benefit technology stocks, and investors purchase stocks. However, ponder this for a moment. What if inflation decreases more rapidly than anticipated by the Fed? I suspect it might. I'll revisit that. Suppose inflation decreases swiftly and reaches the targeted rate sooner than expected. In that case, they might need to reduce rates. But how advantageous would that be for stocks? If that transpires, nobody questions why it occurred. They merely observe that inflation and interest rates may diminish. Thus, buy stock. It's akin to acknowledging that inflation and interest rates may diminish. Nevertheless, if they do, it's due to us being ensnared in the severe downturn, precisely what I'm anticipating. Consequently, if that transpires, stocks might plummet by 30%, 40%, or even 50%. Hence, don't wish for reduced rates. Or if you anticipate lower rates, recognize the implication. It doesn't signify the Fed acted cautiously. It doesn't indicate that life is splendid and one should invest in tech stocks. It signifies that we're in the very dire downturn that I've articulated, and thus stocks will plunge. Be cautious of what you wish for. My projection is that they will raise rates, overdo it, and instigate a very severe downturn. When that happens, they might pivot, but not for commendable reasons. It'll be due to the economic downturn and the subsequent stock market plunge. Hence, don't be swayed by the Wall Street dialogue in this regard. As I perceive it, the Fed will overstretch. Now, why isn't the Fed aware of this? Simply because they never are. They possess one of the poorest track records in forecasting among all institutions, in my opinion. Their history since 1913 comprises a series of blunders, and this will be their latest one. In essence, the Fed is on a trajectory, and we precisely know what it is because they've disclosed it. One just needs to heed them and trust their intentions. They'll raise rates, allow high rates to function, 
observe the decline in inflation, and perhaps reduce rates in 2024. What I anticipate is that they'll raise rates in the upcoming meetings exactly as I've detailed, but they'll overextend. The indications of an economic downturn are already apparent, yet the Fed isn't acknowledging them. I'll revisit what those indications are, incidentally. Consequently, we're poised to experience a very severe downturn for several reasons, leading to a plummet in stock prices. Hence, if the Fed slashes rates, don't rejoice excessively as it will be in a world where severe downturn, elevated unemployment, and plummeting stock prices are the prevailing circumstances. To conclude on a rather sobering note, there's a global liquidity crisis on the horizon. Now, I spoke about a global economic downturn, and one might inquire if that's akin to a liquidity crisis. No, an economic downturn or depression is vastly different from a liquidity crisis or financial panic. They are distinct phenomena although they can co-occur. In 2008, we witnessed both a downturn or depression and a financial panic synchronizing. However, they need not necessarily coincide. What we seem to be bracing for is a global financial crisis and an international economic downturn simultaneously, arriving sooner rather than later. Why do I affirm the existence of a global dollar shortage? People might question this. The Fed produced $9 trillion, which they did in 2020. Although the figures have dwindled since then, that's the amount they generated. So, why is there a global dollar shortage? What most individuals fail to recognize is that behind the scenes, off the books, there exists $1 quadrillion worth of derivatives.